Burke Dales to try and hit Edmonton. Big boot. Skyler Green's going to let it go into the end zone. And that's out for a single point. And so it's a three-point lead. Better field position for Edmonton. And Dales wasn't intending to get the single. Well, prior to the game, a solemn Remembrance Day salute to our troops. Every Friday night, of course, we salute the troops as well and then would like to also salute and thank the troops for what they do around the world. Meet Lieutenant Pierre Vincent Daig, a member of the Canadian Police Mentoring Team. He's on patrol here just south of Kandahar City. Canadian forces offer support to local Afghan authorities. Matthew Bertrand cut down for the second time in this game after a catch, and this time Shannon James. We have over 66,000 troops around the world and over 3,000 in Afghanistan. And Pierre Vincent Day taking care of some of the locals, and that's what the great things that they're doing in Afghanistan and in over 16 missions, UN and NATO missions around the world. Eskimos have converted three of 11 second and longs. Second and 10 here. Oh, oh, and that one oh, almost oh, picked oh, off oh, by oh. Dwayne Carpenter. Boy, oh, you'd like to have that back. Yeah, you could just see it coming too because Dwayne Carpenter was closing in a hurry. I don't think Ricky Ray ever saw him. He's right in the middle of your screen right here, looking like he might go deep, but he doesn't. He just comes out to the left side of the formation defensively for Calgary. Ricky Ray doesn't see him in chase, I don't believe, because he throws that out in front, and I thought that was going to the house. All he had to do was hang on. No Stampeder linebacker has an interception this year. That was close to being the first. Not a deep kick by Prefontaine. And it bounces out at the Calgary bench. Great field position for the Stamps after a 30-yard boot. We just got Williams' attention, didn't we? <laughs> Probably a Calgary fan from Okotoks, but cheering that Eskimo kick return, and there's a first down grab by Robbie Bryant. He's been relatively quiet, but Nick Lewis has been big tonight. Nick Lewis is the option on that zone replay we showed you, and he's one of the options in the passing game when Henry Burris fakes it to Joffrey Reynolds. One of the reasons he has over 100 yards, had another 100-yard game reverse versus Edmonton back in their first meeting. It was relatively quiet in their last three, but another 100-yard game already for Nick Lewis. Stamps first down at the Eskimo 50-yard line. Burris straddled the line of scrimmage to get the way to Brett Rowell. Close to the line, but I think he did a good job of staying in a legal passings position. You see the right, right at the 50-yard line. Henry Burst, there's the fake. There goes Kai Ellis, and you're right. Just straddles it. The ball behind the line when he lets go. You have to look at the football and where it is in relationship to that line of scrimmage. 21 yard gain, bunch formation short side. And now Burris downfield, in zone. Rumpy Bryant touchdown. And both former Bombers have hit pay dirt in the Western Semi. What a throw from Henry Burns, who puts this on a rope to Robbie Bryant. Without a touchdown all year, Bryant has his first as a Stampeder in the Western Semi. Play action to Joffrey Reynolds, right on a rope in between the two Edmonton defenders. Robbie Bryant has himself a touchdown in the semifinal. Three plays, 64 yards. And Calgary now has their first two-score lead. 
extra point from DeAngelis. And the Stamps lead by nine. Bob, my office now. There's nothing like the smell of fresh cooked bacon. When it's real, you know when it's real. Introducing Wendy's Bacon Deluxe with thick cut applewood smoked bacon on hot juicy beef. For over 20 years, Visa has helped athletes achieve their dreams and get to the Olympic Games. Now, we're going to help you get there. When you use your Visa card, right now you have a chance to win a trip to the Vancouver 2010 Games. We hope to see you there. Visa, the only card accepted at the Olympic Games. More people go with Visa. It plays. It stows. It slides. It saves. It sees. It rolls. And it's all standard. We gave it more ideas per square inch because more is what we do. Introducing the Terrain, the all-new compact crossover from GMC. 24-14, it's a 10-point Calgary lead. Robbie Bryant straight down the seam here. First of all, is gonna take advantage of Byron Parker peeking in the backfield and not staying in his backpedal in man-to-man. -man. But watch how the throw is on a rope. There's Parker here closing. You got the safety, that's a small window. And Henry Burris puts it right on the money in that window. Nice hard throw for the touchdown to Robbie Bryant. Key Whitlock on the return. And a good one. Up near the 45, but the Eskimos have to get this offense back in gear now. 10 points down, 11.40 to go, so time not an issue yet. No, lots and lots of time, but Ricky Ray has to start getting the offense moving and try and take advantage of those opportunities deep if he gets another one. He had some early that they didn't hook up on, but now it looks like Henry Burris is getting into his zone. He had a good drive there, and that was a perfect pass. Now it's Ricky Ray's turn to match. Eskimos had 507 yards against BC last week. They've scored 81 points in the previous two games, but they've gotten quiet here today. Calvin McCarty, that ball popped loose. McCarty looked like he reeled it back in at the 50 and has five. Yeah, that certainly doesn't mean that Kevin Strasser has to start thinking about bombs away every play. Second and five, continue to move the chains. Lots of time left on the clock is a good situation. But if they get the opportunity deep, like they had the opportunities in the first half, well, they got to make the plays now. Looks like they're going to the double tight end. Graham Bell is in. Matt Burch on the other tight end. Second and five. First down, brought down by Dwight Anderson just on the Calgary side of half. When, when you bring in tight ends like that, now you put your wide receiver in Ephraim Hill, you put him really on an island with Dwight Anderson in the corner. So now Ricky Ray has basically an option route to Ephraim Hill. If Dwight Anderson plays inside, they throw the out. If he plays outside, they throw the in. That time, here's the outside pass. Receivers with McCarty as the lone back. First and ten. Ray. McCarty. And Malik Jackson there to ease him out near the first down chain. They'll mark him at the 45, and it's a pickup of close to nine. It's really a sign of respect when Chris Jones, the defensive coordinator for the Calgary Stampeders, plays so much zone defense against Edmonton. This is not a zone defense team. This is a man-to-man -man team. This is a pressure team. This is an in-your-face defense. But Chris Jones against Ricky Ray, it's a pay of respect to say, we're going to play more zone against you and make you patient. Second, about a yard and a half. And Whitlock 
should have it. Especially tough on Kevin Strasser in that the, the friendly rivalry that they have. Opposite sidelines, former teammates, Strasser and Chris Jones in Montreal for five years. And now Strasser has to be patient. He has to take those underneath throws. The Calvin McCarty has to keep the run game because Chris Jones against this team does not play nearly as much man-to-man -man as he does against others. Have a measurement that gives Ricky Ray a chance to get to the sidelines and meet up with Kevin Straffer, Strasser. Trying to even his record at five and five as the offensive coordinator, replacing Rick Warman at midseason. And it is a first down, and this is a critical drive for the Eskimos. They need some points. Of course, the Ticats, what were they down 11 with just over two minutes to go? And oh, there's lots of time. There's lots of time. The blitz. Oh, he would not run by it. Oh, just tripped up by Shannon James, or he's still running. Well, you're right because Wes Lysak, the safety, had come out of the middle, and Shannon James was playing the back side of the play. So Shannon James is on the back side, nobody in the middle, and if Archie Whitlock can squirt through here, he has got a big, big gainer. And Shannon James just trips him up. for Whitlock, second and four. Ray gets it away, and it's broken up. Flags fly. And they're going to call Shannon James. Defending against Kamau Peterson. Well, you know, I think early on, and I watched that matchup from the beginning, I saw Kamau Peterson try and come across the middle. Shannon James was real physical with him all the way through the route. I don't, I didn't really see the interference at the point of attack there are two different flags down i mean when the ball arrived it looked like a pretty clean knockdown by james but there was a lot of contact prior to that point class interference target number 23 10-yard penalty major foul roughing a passer low hit number 39 15-yard penalty. Charleston Hughes down. also, so a double whammy at 25 yards. Well, this is big because, first of all, the pass interference gives them the first down, and then they'll add on yardage to the left of your screen. You're going to see Kamal Peterson right over the middle, right there is Shannon James. They're battling. There's physical play right there from James. The knockdown was decent, but physical before that was the call, and there's the low hit, and that'll be called every time. So the ball marked inside the Calgary 15 because of the half the distance it's, it's actually a 24 yard penalty penalties Eskimos in business trying to cut into this 10 point deficit looks to the end zone Jump ball incomplete another flag and I think it's going to be Charleston Hughes again. He put the hit on Ricky Ray just as he was throwing the ball. Major foul, roughing the passer. Number 39, Calgary. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. Back to back. And that'll be again half the distance. Charleston Hughes right down here at the stand-up position at the rush end spot. Up the field, bites the play action, then redirects. Goes high to the head this time. A low hit, the first one, and then high. I don't think it was too late. It was just he launched himself up into the head of Ricky Ray right there. So it's first and goal at the seven. Point game. Ricky Ray does not have to force it. He needs the field goal and the touchdown. I know it's tempting down in here. If you want to capitalize on this drive, especially when you get back-to-back -back penalties getting you on the doorstep like this. Second and one now. You know, there are critics that are 
saying you're at the seventh. Can't you find uh, a receiver deeper into the end zone or take a shot into the end zone? And the timing was a little off on that throw as well. They waited way too long to get it out of there. 31 yards and penalties on the drive. Second and goal. That's in the end zone. And it is going to be marked at inside the one. Target at the one, but he didn't get in. A foot short for Ephraim Hill, and it's third and a goal.